Hi there, welcome back to the channel. And uh, today we've got a little project. It's going to be a capacitor discharger, which I had a little PCB made for, uh, thanks to PCB Way. They're sponsoring the video and they sponsor the boards as well. But let me explain. When we work with uh, tube radios or tube gear or anything really that uh, has fairly high voltages and capacitors involved, they charge and they hold their charge. Now, if you've been doing this for a while, you'll know what I mean. You can actually get pretty badly zapped even after quite some time after you switched off the device. And like many of you or many hobbyists and techs, I've had these things made. This is just a resistor and you connect this to ground and you touch the uh, capacitor end there. And of course, what happens is the charge escapes through the resistor. Now, I can't remember what value is here, but I'll tell you what the value here is. It's too low. What happened here is what normally happens with these things, or what can happen with these things, is that you put them on there, you discharge the, the capacitor, and because you don't know how far discharged it is, or how discharged it is, you leave it there for a while, and like an idiot, I forgot to take it out. So when I switched it on, the entire B plus started going through this, and as you can see, it got quite a, kind of warm. Let's see what the resistor looks like. This is a, I believe it's a five watt resistor. Again, as I said, I don't remember what value I put on here, but I've used this for a long time and it's worked fine until the day that I forgot it. And what's gonna happen next is I would put this on, the, the resistor might actually be open and I might think that it's discharged when in fact it doesn't do anything. So let's see what we've got here. <laughs> yeah, 100 ohm. This is very low. Now that means that, uh, actually you see, this is actually cracked. There we go. That's what the inside of one of these resistors looks like. This one is gone. This one's dead. 100 ohm. I think I used that one for um, transistor equipment, solid state amplifiers with things like, you know, 50, 60 volts. But again, because I had no indication or no protection, I'm not sure that I haven't used that for a higher value discharge as well or higher value voltage higher voltage discharge so this one i think is slightly higher of course the smaller the resistor is the quicker it discharges which is great but on the other hand the surge of current that you get when you first touch this can be incredibly high and certainly you cannot leave this on there to just you know do its thing with uh, with B plus connected. I mean that's that's a killer. Uh, this one was 390 ohm. I think this is the one I used for the bigger capacitors. But again, it's still fairly low. It means that it discharges the capacitor very very fast, but um, it's still pretty low. And uh, if anything, I should have used a, a higher power resistor. But this one seems to have been working fine and. It's done its job. Now what I've done is I've had these boards made and quite honestly you don't really need these boards but why did I do it? As with many things because I can. All this does is it takes the uh, takes a signal the B plus into the high voltage line there it uh, brings it through two resistors in this case two resistors in series and I've chosen to use 1k resistors here and I've made this big enough to accommodate 15 watt resistors, which is way overkill. I'm actually going to use uh, 5k, uh, 5 watt resistors. I've got two of them in series and I've got them handy, but you can use up to 15 watts. This is the size for those uh, resistors and they go on this side. And then those two feed a series of diodes and those diodes then feed a lead. I'll show you the schematic in a second. This works perfectly well. And because you might get the polarity wrong, I've done the reverse. There's a reverse uh, loop here. So if you've got a negative B plus or negative supply voltage, instead of going through those dyes, it'll go through this one and it'll also light up the other LED, which is uh, current limited by the one resistor. I will show you the, the schematic, not a problem. But this is very, very simple. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to put it in one of these cases, a little Hammond box. I'll have to, I'll probably insulate this somehow but the idea is that I will have, in fact, I've drilled it already. I will have a probe coming out of here and I will have the two LEDs on that end, as you can see. And I've also added a switch. It's a push button switch. And the whole idea is that this is push to make 
uh, release to break. So it's a momentary switch. And the idea is that I should be able to um, discharge it. And then when it gets to a certain point, I can push the switch and it bypasses, it shorts one of these resistors. So the resistance becomes smaller and it does the final discharge a bit faster. I can also use this all the time if I want to for lower voltages, because then it'll just find the 1K resistor in series there. But when I show you the schematic, it'll be a lot easier. And then what I'm going to do is populate this board, show you the result, and hopefully be able to show you the whole thing built into this. I'm looking forward to it. This is way overkill for something really simple, but when I tried to build this with the diodes and I was doing it um, sort of in the air, point to point, it became very messy. So I decided to just do it properly. Do a little board and do it properly. Let me show you what the schematic's all about. Very, very simple. And once again, I want to thank PCBWay for the sponsorship and for sponsoring the boards. The schematic here couldn't be simpler. It's very, very simply a matter of uh, connecting to the capacitor, the high voltage over there. That comes through here, through the 1K resistor, through another 1K resistor. So when this switch is open, you've got 2K, 2K in series. It comes through here, and then here it meets a series of diodes. Let's look at these diodes first over here. So what happens is uh, the voltage or the current flows through here, it flows through these diodes. When it flows through these diodes, it's going to create about 0.7 volt drop across each, 0.6 to 0.7, let's call it 0.7. So one, two, three, four. That's about 2.8 volts over here, 2.8 volts DC over here. Remember, those are blocked now because the positive is there and the negative is on the LV side, the low voltage side. I haven't called it ground on purpose. So 2.8 volts over here, and then I've got a LED. In this, in this case, I've got two LEDs back to back. This 100 ohm resistor limits the current to the LEDs. These are ultra bright LEDs. They uh, drop about 1.9 volts when fully, uh, fully active and they can draw anything from up to 20 milliamps, but they really are quite bright. And even at half a milliamp, this thing is uh, visible, as I will show you. And then that lights up, right? So if you happen to have a capacitor that's negatively charged, in other words, a dual supply or something, and you connect this to ground and that to the negatively charged, okay? So now the current or the current doesn't flow down here, it flows across up. And that'll do the same thing with these diodes. So one, two, three, four. So there you've got 2.8 volts across these diodes. These are reverse biased. And of course, then you've got, uh, this is negative. So you've got this LED going on and current limited through that. And of course, the whole thing is current limited through those uh, two resistors, the power resistors. Now, let's go back to the first case. We've got high voltage on here and ground on here, for example, a chassis. So your current's flowing through here and it discharges down there. Now, if it's taking a long time, because 2K is a lot, right? You can, when it gets to a certain brightness, you can just push the button there. That's a push button switch, and it shorts this one out. So then you've only got 1K resistor in series, and the discharge happens faster or more complete if, um, if you just want to take the last bit of juice out of your capacitors. That's all it is. It's very, very simple. These are 1N4007 diodes. This is a normal 600 milliwatt resistor. It can even be a quarter watt resistor, no big deal. These LEDs are ultra bright. I've used red. They, uh, they have about 1.9 volts when fully, when fully biased. And these are five watt resistors up to 10, 15 watts if you want. Now on the board, everything fits nicely as well. You've got the two big resistors on the underside of the board, okay? The two LEDs over here, the, the uh, current limiting resistor for the LEDs over here, and of course the two buttons or the two connections for the switch over there, which I'll show you how I'm going to connect uh, that later. The diodes are set in two banks over here, and you've got the low voltage connection and the high voltage connection. This will go to the probe, this will go to a crock clip uh, that you connect to the chassis. And just for fun, I always like doing this. This is more or less what this thing is supposed to look like. We'll see if it looks anything like it in the end. Pretty neat. It works well. Again, overkill for this sort of device, but if you try and connect eight diodes, one resistor, two LEDs, and two massive resistors, point to point, it gets messy, you'll know what I mean. And a little board like this just makes it a hell of a lot simpler. Let's go and build this thing. So we start with the empty board, and by the magic of uh, video editing, we have the final result. Very simple, no big deal here. Eight diodes over, the, over there. Make sure you get the polarities right. They're indicated on the, uh, on the uh, silk screen, low voltage, high voltage. The connections for the switch are there. And these, these uh, 
leads are fitted like this because I'm going to push it through the end of the of the box and the two resistors over here now as I said I can make these as big as I want I've actually just shifted them a bit because I don't need all the size and I wanted to avoid those over there but it's not a problem if you've got a bigger resistor you just separate it a little bit from the from the board it's not an issue and this is done and of course what's going to happen now is that I've got this thing drilled it's been measured and drilled this is going to go in here actually wrong way around beg your pardon this goes to the bottom it can it can actually touch the aluminium there and help to dissipate a bit of heat but it unless you forget it in the circuit it won't create much heat because the amount of current that flows through here is basically a spike when you first touch it and then it just drops off very very rapidly now what else do we have this uh, switch goes in here and it gets wired to those two points down there right and this will be on the side and of course this thing will be that way around the probe what i've done is i've taken an old multimeter probe cut the end off made a hole there and i think it's going to work because i felt i found that i can actually push it in and then i'm gonna have to use some uh, resin or hot glue to make sure it stays like that because the idea i want to make this portable so that it, there's no well as i'm trying to avoid the temptation to um to have a probe and and forget it you know like connect it and forget it and the same thing will happen as i had with that resistor over there so the idea is that i have a probe i will have the the ground i'm changing the color obviously but the ground will come out here and that'll connect to the low voltage section over there and then this thing will just clip to the chassis of anywhere wherever is the ground with the capacitors and i'll be able to touch that and i'll be able to see the leads on top here so that should work pretty well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to connect um, a DC supply. I'm not going to use a high voltage on here, but I'm going to use a DC supply to show you just how low of, uh, the current can go before this thing stops uh, being seen. This is very, very bright. I've got this thing connected to the power supply and I can change the current by reducing the voltage. I've set it to two volts and it's 20 milliamp current limit or thereabouts. And as you can see, 18.5 milliamps. And this thing is very bright. It's very difficult to really see the effect on camera, but I want to show you, this thing's moving away. I want to show you the difference or what changes when I reduce the current. Now I'm going to start dropping the voltage and we'll see what happens to the brightness of the lead. That's eight milliamps. There's two milliamps. That is 0.2 milliamps. And you can still see it. Now I'm going to start dropping the voltage slower. Or let's see what happens when this thing really, I'm, I'm looking at this thing and trying to determine what it is that I would see. I can see that. I can still see that. If this thing's facing me, in fact, any way I move my head, I can still see that. And that is uh, 0.05 milliamps. These things are incredibly bright. So, yeah, this thing's working. Good. Now all I need to do is complete the uh, putting this thing together. As I said, just clip it in there. These LEDs go into there. Obviously, I've spaced it so that it, it fits well. I'm not actually going to screw this down because what I'm going to do is I'm going to blob this with a lot of hot glue or resin. I'm not sure because I really want this thing to be held in place properly. I will put in the switch over there and I will then be able to solder those down. I'm trying to figure out how to insulate this. I'm not sure I want this thing to just be floating around. I don't like the idea. I mean, obviously... There's high voltages on here and everything is fairly well insulated from each other. But if something goes wrong, I don't want to be touching a metal case if something touches the case itself. Um, I'll have to think about it. I might just get a lot of a tube of heat uh, shrink, the big one, just put it over the top and heat shrink it. I can always do that next, but I'm going to try and put these things in and we'll see what the result is because this thing then has two screws or four screws that put a layer or a cover on top and I'll be left with this thing that I can use like this okay with a switch if I want to push it 
that touches. I, I'm not sure I like this, but anyway, that's what I'm going to do for now and we'll see what the result is. Well, this isn't exactly the best insulation job that one could see or find, but it'll do for now. This is uh, wrapped with this sort of tape. It's a rubber tape that's sort of heat shrunk. So if it holds, it'll do a good job. But the problem I've got is I've got the switch over here, which means that I've got to cut around it. I'll see how this holds out, but it seems to do the job. So I'll be looking at it like this. Okay. So I'm going to charge some capacitors up or a capacitor up and we'll see how this thing discharges. I'm going to test this by charging that capacitor. It's a 47 microfarad with my capacitor leakage tester. I've set it quite low. It's at 62 volts. So let's take this out. Make sure we don't touch that. I'll put this on ground of the capacitor and we'll watch this as we touch it. I won't push the button. There we go. And it's gone. I can actually push the button. That was too quick. That happened far too quickly. Let's see if we can get a better view of this. Charge it. As you can see, the capacitor holds the charge. Well, sort of holds the charge. And now if I touch it, See that? 1.4 volts. That did a pretty good job. Let me take this up to about 100 volts or thereabouts and I'll charge it again. 107 volts. I won't push the button. I can still sort of see it. I don't know if you can see it through the camera. You can sort of just see the flicker there. And I know it's discharged. Try that again. One point five volts. It's gone all the way down. Let's take this up. Let's take it up further to. In fact, why not? Three hundred and fifty, three thirty, or thereabouts. Three hundred and thirty volts. Let's try that. There we go. I can just see it. See that? I think you can just see that. It's down to 1.5. Now, if I take push it in, it's going to be discharging the rest a bit faster. I can't see the light anymore. Let's try that again. 330 volts. Let's see if we can see this properly now. There we go. If I see just a glimmer on there, it's all disappearing now. 1.5 volts. And of course, if I leave it, it'll go up again a little bit and I can just do it again. This thing works very, very well, very, very well. Now, what if I put it in reverse? What if I happen to do this? Okay. And I charge it. And now I go to the other side, I'm trying to do this without touching anything. See, the other light goes on. The other LED goes on and then it tapers down to 1.5, 1.4 volts. And then of course, there's just a little bit of energy left and you can wait a while to get rid of it. Try that again. I'm trying to get this right on camera. The flickering is because that um, tip is very sharp and it's sort of sliding off the capacitor leg but you get the idea. This works perfectly. This thing's working really well. Switch that off. I don't want 330 volts lying around. So yeah, this thing works. This is what I've wanted. This is what I've got. And I can do it for um, big capacitors like that one, high voltage. I can do it for, in fact, I can probably do, 
you know, 200 microfarads capacitor shouldn't be a problem. It'll just take a little bit longer to discharge. I very much doubt the power rating is an issue here because this is a spike and then it just drops very fast. But um, this thing's going to come in very handy and I won't have to worry too much about these uh, resistors overheating. And of course, if I'm working on low voltage stuff like, uh, well, solid state, you know, some of them use 50, 60 volts. I could probably go straight into the push button and just zap it with 1K and that should do the job. So yeah, that's it. It works. It works well. I'm going to post the uh, PCBs on the share section of the P uh, PCBWay website. If you want to copy this, go ahead. You can get your own made. And all the information is actually on the video, all the components and everything else. I won't need to give you much more information than this. This was a little bit of an overkill project, but as I said, why do I do it? Because I can and because I enjoy having these things handy when I need them and I don't want to end up with disasters like this one. <laughs> I really got a fright with this thing because it was smoking like crazy. So yeah, that's my little project, capacitor discharger. And um, I'm happy with this. I really am. I think you can probably hear that. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon or PayPal. Links in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.